We've looked at some unbelievable ideas on Tim for Tuesday in the past, we really have. But what I'm about to show you today really takes the biscuit. Howard George Stirrup, the flat earther, has found actual hearts in the wild. <laughs> Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Tin Four Tuesday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a huge thank you to the sponsors of today's video, Mel Science. Mel Science is a subscription service that offers monthly STEM science boxes, which combines hands-on experiments with VR and AR technologies to engage kids in studying science. They are definitely breaking that stereotype that science is boring, difficult and only for certain types of people. And they do that by making serious science accessible, interesting and cool. Science is about exploration, experiments, discovery and asking questions, something which comes very naturally to children. My son enjoyed the tin hedgehog experiment so much last time that he was desperate to do something else from the Mel Chemistry Starter Kit. He loves all animals, so we chose this chemical jellyfish experiment from the Artificial Sea Set. These kits give you two to three new experiments on a new chemistry topic every month with free VR lessons in the Mel Chemistry app. As you can see, he got really involved with this one and the final result was awesome. He absolutely loved it. I was very much delighted with the result because not only did he learn something, I spent a bit of time with him as well. Uh, and you can't argue with that. Use the promo code SIMANDAN50 to get a 50% discount off the first month of any of Mel subscriptions. Or you can click the link in the description which already has the promo code attached. But be quick because that promo code only has a one month time limit. Right, back to today's video. And you may be wondering if you heard that correctly at the beginning there. Well, I'm afraid that yes, yes you did. We must brave this one together, everyone. Here we go. Biogeology The harp-shaped stone phenomena When rough rock is broken into smaller pieces, it tends to maintain its original colour and detail. Whereas smooth stones, pebbles, appear to be fully intact due to them having a pale skin. Okay, first off, the common smooth pebble like you're showing here is almost exclusively formed in the presence of water. They are usually found in riverbeds or beaches where the act of water flowing over them over a long period of time, as well as the abrasion caused by its movement across a riverbed, give us that smooth look that we so often see. Making any fractures clearly visible similar to how organs have a skin and a serous fluid around them that escalated pretty quickly didn't it to protect them from abrasion there doesn't seem to be any transitional stones between the two categories which suggests that the smooth stone has a different origin than the rough cut rock harp shaped smooth stones can be found either along the coast in valleys riverbeds, or just buried in mud. I wonder why. The presence of water, as I just said? Many of these smooth stones have the shape of a harp, which in its most common form has a wide flat top and inward tapering sides. And if you haven't figured it out yet, he is inferring that these stones are ancient hearts, I think as does the heart throughout all kinds of creatures. The same exact pattern can be found in stones of all sizes with multiple matching features. And I'm sure I could find a bunch of stones that resembled a big toe. Does that mean they used to be big toes? No, no it doesn't. We can find many external and internal correlations to the anatomy of a heart in each harp-shaped smooth stone. Oh really? They've all got four chambers inside them, have they? Openings, creases or indentations located on or near the top, which could be remains of the aorta and vena cava openings. And they could be a toilet for a mollusk. Holes in pebbles like this are naturally occurring and can be caused by a variety of things. Erosion, boring sponges, burrowing worms, etc, etc. 
The bottom point is slightly twisted, which would be expected if it is due to spiral contraction of the heart muscle. This is pareidolia in its purest form, isn't it? It really is. The front is usually rounded or multifaceted. The back side is most often flat or slightly concave. We find a wide range of faded meaty colours or black, which may be because there are some blue blooded creatures. Or is it a black type of rock? Just a little theory I've got there. The quartz that we see running throughout could be petrified fat. So are you saying that it's quartz or it's fat? Because it can't be both, can it? This is a ridiculous concept, even for you, Howard. Branching out red coloured lines or water eroded channels could be the remains of blood vessels. Well, the same thing applies here, Howard. Are they water eroded channels or are they old blood vessels? Well, of course they're not the remains of old blood vessels. What are we saying? Deposits of iron ore found inside and outside would be expected as we know there is haemoglobin in the blood. Iron ore, of course, are iron-based minerals found within rocks. Haemoglobin is a protein found in red blood cells. Now that does contain iron, yes, but in no way near the levels that there is in iron ore. The isthmus, which divides the larger valves, and the remains of the inner chambers, where we can see the bumpy internal surface of the chambers, which would represent trabecular carne. So one rock's got a hole in the middle of it, and that's evidence that all of the rocks you're saying here used to be hearts. Dear, oh dear. Here is the full list of correlations that we have found so far, which we share to help the open source investigation either verify or refute the biogeology theory. I actually think that there's more chance of the Earth being flat, I know, I know, than this biogeology theory being correct. Now they're obviously both infinitely close to zero, but I think flat earth is that tiny, tiny little bit more likely. Other smooth stones resemble organs like kidneys, livers and spleens, but are hard to distinguish as they have less features. Gall stones and kidney stones may have petrified into opal and agate stones. He means gall stones everyone, but that is nothing. And I mean nothing compared to what is about to come out of Howard's mouth next. Be prepared. And geodes might be petrified testicles. Let that sentence sink in for a minute. There we go. I don't even know what to say to that. Mike Wilkerson from the YouTube channel Stallium7 theorises that fatty tissue may transmutate into a crystalline material. He has also collected a potential half lobe of a petrified brain, as we can see iron ore exactly where the majority of blood would be located. Oh, our old friend Stellium7. He did this video, anyone remember? Uh, but it's really only been for the last year that I've been looking at this mountain with different eyes. An elephant's eye isn't right on the front of its face near the trunk, it's on the side of its face. We'll revisit you one day matey, that's for sure. People have found a vitrified whale brain full of quartz, which would be expected due to the brain being mostly fatty tissues. If that is a fossilised whale brain, then quartz could indeed have formed in the rock that filled the gap where the brain once was. And there are many examples of wood that is petrified. We have also got historical evidence that flesh can petrify in a very short time, with Hirolamo Segato. And we all know of the experiments that can change fats and oils into alcohol and soap with just heat. 
Just like we can change sand and ceramics into glass. There is also a good chance that Robert Plott was correct in his initial conclusions about the fossils he discovered being flesh. And there is also good evidence that the theory of dinosaurs was invented because it is profitable for museums and also a genius way to cover up evidence of giants and dragons. That makes no logical sense. There is evidence for dinosaurs and there is no evidence for dragons. And where are these fossils for the giants that used to exist? Causing us to ignore the mountains of evidence that can be observed worldwide. Oh, you mean evidence that Roger from Mud Fossil University shares? We know that blood travels throughout our bones, which supports the idea that large stones with fractal channels and iron ore deposits could be fragments of titan bones. More ridiculous theories with no backing of evidence whatsoever. Although some formations may just inspire pareidolia, there are also carvings, artefacts and photograph evidence to support the idea. Photograph evidence? What? A really tall man. Brilliant. Hardly a giant, is it? And when facing so many detailed examples, it becomes hard to deny the probability that these correlations couldn't have been sculpted to size and situation from just wind, water and mechanical erosion. You'll be bloody surprised what wind and water can do over huge periods of time. But the key thing here is, for every rock or pebble or stone that looks like an animal or organ, there are a thousand, no, ten thousand others that don't. This is pareidolia for sure, coupled with a flawed world belief. We can see temples and pyramids that have been or are still being excavated. Thousands of star fortresses that have been covered up with mud and left in ruins. There are around 20 underwater cities and megalithic constructions that we know of and petrified trees standing upright through multiple layers of strata, which all support the idea of a worldwide flood, as mentioned in the Bible, the Quran, the Epic of Gilgamesh, over 500 myths, and artefacts found in Egypt, etc., that all portray a firmament dividing the waters above from the waters below. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, Howard's true agenda. I knew it wouldn't take long for that to rear its head. Well, there we go. Another fascinating Tim Ford Tuesday, all wrapped up and done and dusted. Thank you so much for watching. It truly is appreciated today. It really is. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, we're past 450,000 now. We're on the road to half a million. Let's do it. Uh, and of course, if you really enjoyed today, hit that like button as well. And if the feeling takes you, why not share it? I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great week. And I'll see you on Friday for Flat Earth Fail Compilation 40. See you then.